Today you're going to work through your first Python program. You got practice in the last lesson just running other people's programs and now you're going to be able to complete your own. If you haven't already, you want to open up this document from your Google Classroom that's got all the instructions. We're going to start with this link right here. It's got some code already in it. Let's see what it looks like. And it's got a comment block at the top and it's got this code right here that's already going to set up a few things. You want to start by going ahead and typing your name and getting all the information that you need in your comment block. This will identify this program as being yours. So put today's date. This is lesson two and the name of the program is Hello World. Now we're going to run this program just like you did the other programs by clicking on this run button. And you can see that the program doesn't really do anything except for that it does do a lot. This line of code sets up the frame and it has a button on it and it has a window or what we call a canvas. So we've got a little bit of code that does a few things, but when I click on the button, nothing happens. Nothing is showing in our window. So we're going to add some more of our code to do that, to uh, make this more interesting. Now, before we do this, everybody has the same URL right here, and this is how you're going to get access your code every time. And you want to get a fresh URL. So look across the top here at these little buttons, these icons. The one that kind of looks like a suitcase, this is going to give you a fresh URL. Go ahead and click on it. And you'll notice that across the top, this will change. You'll get something unique that will be yours. You want to keep track of these URLs. If you don't keep track of the URL, you will never find your program again. So if you want to right now, you can highlight this, do a copy, come over here into your lesson and do a paste. You can maybe just uh, do it at the bottom down here. But you want to keep track of all your URLs. So anytime you save it, you're going to get a URL and you just keep track of them so you can always come back to your code. So now I have my URL. I've typed in my programmer name. So I do have it saved somewhere. And then once again, when I click it, it doesn't look like anything really important is happening. So we're going to add some code to this now. Let's come here to line eight. You'll see that there is a variable called message. And this variable just has two quotation marks with nothing inside it. So this is called an empty string. Let's go ahead and type in the words hello world into those quotation marks. So keep the quotation marks. You're just going to add some text inside the quotation marks. Now let's run this program. And you'll see that right away, even without clicking on the button, my canvas says hello world. So we just set a value to that variable. When I click on the button, then the words go away. So let's add some more code. You'll see inside this, this is called a function or a procedure right here. Click, and there's another message variable right here. It's actually the same message. And this one has a value, and you see that this one has an empty string. So we're going to put another value in here. Let's put your name. So don't put the words your name. Actually put your name inside the quotation marks. So now message has a value right here, and message has a value right here. When you run the program, the first thing you see is hello world. When you click on the button, you should see your name. Now another thing we can do is change the color. So you'll see right here, we're going to go into the draw procedure. And I see the word red in quotation marks. That's setting the color of my words. I can change that to a different color. But you can't just pick any color. Python has its own set of colors. And those are the ones that you need to use. If you come back here to your document, you'll see a link right here that, that will show you all the colors. Let's go ahead and take a look. So here's the colors that you can use, and here's what you need to type inside the quotation mark. So if I want teal, if I want this color, I'll just change the word red to teal. Maybe I want lime. But these are the colors that you can pick from. When you come back to your code, you see where the word red is, you can change it to a different color. Make sure that you keep your quotation marks, and when, then when you run it, you'll get the color that you asked for. Now to make it even more interesting, we can add a variable for color. We have a variable for message, I can add a variable for color. So I'm going to add that right underneath the word message, and then in quotation marks, I can put the color. 
Now I can change the color right here and click. So I'm going to add another global color that lets me actually change the color. And I'm going to change the color to something else here. So I have it teal there, and then maybe I want it to be white. And make sure you use quotation marks when you're typing in the, the name of the color. Now here where I had the actual color, I can take this the words off with the quotation marks and I'm going to substitute it for just the variable. Like I have message here with no quotation marks, I'm going to have color here with no quotation marks. The computer will take the value of the color and put it right there, just like it's taking the value of the message and putting that right there. So now I have teal and then I have white. Now you might notice that the words are getting cut off a little bit. I can adjust the size of my frame. So right here's the size. This is how the width and this is the height. So maybe if I want to make it a little bit longer, I can make it more kind of squarish, but you can adjust these numbers. This is going to be the size of your overall frame. So you can see I made it quite a bit bigger. Now this, the number right here, that's in my draw text is the size of my letters. So if, right now 48 is pretty big. If I, if I change this to 24, you'll see that the letters are about half the size. Now I like for my button to be a little bit longer. You can see when you run it that the button is kind of small. I like for my button to go all the way across. So in order to do that, I'm going to add another number here. Here's where I'm adding the button. I'm going to come after the word click, add a comma, and 200. That will make my button quite a bit longer. Let's see. I think that looks better. And one thing more that we can change is where my text is. So this right here is the location of where the text starts. The first number, it's like an X. So this is how far over, and this is like a Y or how far down. So I can change either number or both. I make them both 50. Let's just see how that adjusts it. See how it's back in the corner now? And if I make this, the numbers both bigger, let's make them 250 and 250. And let's just see how that changes it. Okay. So you can adjust these numbers and put the words just where you want. You can adjust the size and you can change your colors. You can change your texts. So you can go ahead and finish off this program by making any little adjustments that you want to. Now, after you've made a few changes, don't forget to save your program. Right now, none of your changes have been saved. So if you were coming back to your old URL, you wouldn't have all these things. So make sure that you click here on the little disk. This is your save. You'll notice that you get a little number next to your URL, but this is your new URL now. You want to copy it. You want to come to your document where it says save your URL. I want to put a copy of it right there. And if I keep making more changes, save it every time and keep track of all your URLs. So just see that you get a new number each time. So that'll be pretty easy. But you must save it. Otherwise, you will not get the changes saved that you just added. If you're feeling really adventurous, try adding a second draw text. I can actually copy this. I can paste it down below. Then, of course, I need to change the location. I don't want to have two texts on top of each other. The computer will let you, but that won't be very interesting. And then I can have a second message. So I have message right there. Maybe I want to have a message to use your quotation marks. And you can say something there. And then if I want to, I can change it inside my click. So I'm going to have a global message too. And I can come right here and say something else. And now when I run it, I'll have two messages. And then don't forget to change message two right there. Now when I run it, I have two messages both times. So have a little bit of fun with this program and see what else you can come up with.